Oh boy. Let's let's do the knife thing. Knife that would. Okay. That's a good start. What is it? It's a stick. It's a stick that I made sharper. It's a pencil. It's a stick. Careful, don't pull yourself with that. I made a stick. <laughs> okay. And now what? Tell me about this one. It's a popsicle stick. It's a flatworm. It's a pop. I'm gonna just do all different kinds of sticks. Now all you need to carve up is some wooden juice and wooden fruit and a wooden freezer. I made a popsicle stick. <laughs> uh, what's the story here? Um, it's a, it's a bubble popper. <laughs> it's a bubble popper. <laughs> Not to burst your bubble, but there aren't any bubbles here. <laughs> it's a bubble popper. I have no idea if I'm doing... Like, am I doing this right? I don't even know. Is there a way to do this wrong? That's an egg. And this is a chicken nugget. It's a Ouija, Ouija board planchette. It's a chicken nugget. Please don't eat that. You made Robert unco... Aw, man. Dang it. Aw, I didn't mean that. Dang it. That's a nice form. What is this supposed to be? Louisiana, it's you. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Louisiana. <laughs> Good old Louisiana, beautiful place. I got stabbed there once. Or was it Kentucky? You made a Louisiana. <laughs> oh, this is, oh, this is... Where am I going with this? I don't know where this is going. That's a chopstick. What do we have there? <laughs> it's an ambidextrous chopstick. <laughs> it's a stick. <laughs> I made an ambidextrous chopstick. <laughs> oh man, I'm actually working on this. Ooh. If you keep this up, you'll be a whittling pro in no time. This one is a new friend. Oh, I can actually turn it around. Okay. This one's a new friend. Was this supposed to be... Oh, I see it now. Okay. Oh, there's buttons for rotating. Okay, that's a new friend. He's beautiful. I'm happy for you. You made a new friend. Yay! <laughs> oh, man, this is a big one. I'm, I'm getting kind of good at this, actually. Wow, that's like a horse. Beautiful handiwork. What do you call it? The big old dog. The spirit of the Mustang. Sir Horsington the Brave. <laughs> Which I think was Amanda's childhood uh, fascination. A brave and noble name for a brave and noble creature. I made a gift for Amanda. Thank you. <laughs> what am I going to do with all these things? I wasn't really a... Uh... Robert and I sit in silence for a while carving our pieces of wood. I think I'm getting the hang of this. It's actually kind of relaxing. I glance over to see what Robert's working on. Is he carving a, a smaller knife? Ah! While I'm distracted, the knife slices into my thumb and blood gushes all over my little, little wooden carving. Um. Ah. Robert is lost in carving and does not notice me bleeding everywhere. Robert still doesn't notice. Robert, I'm dying. I am bleeding to death. Robert finally looks over. He reaches into his jacket. How much does he have in there? And he pulls out a red bandana. He wraps it around my thumb. Hold tight. He hops off the truck and I can hear him rummaging around in his car. He comes back a moment later with a well-stocked first aid kit. Robert carefully wipes all the blood off my hand and swipes a bit of antiseptic onto the cup. Cut. With surprising gentleness, he places a bit of gauze on the wound and wraps it up. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. He hands me what's left of the tube of antiseptic. Make sure to keep that cut clean. It's, it's, it's oddly touching. And a little sexy. 
I guess I'm a real widower now? That you are. Be careful, though. They're attracted to the smell of blood. What is? The cryptids. Tons of them out here, you know. Like, Mothman and stuff? Mothman's bullshit, but yeah. This town is a hotbed for cryptozoological occurrences. You're joking. Oh, how I wish I were. I was a, I'm a skeptic myself, or at least I thought I was. There are things in this wood that we can't possibly comprehend. I think about my entire time in the city. Aca aside from the occasional stray coyote, I don't think it's too bad. You ever hear of the Dover Ghost? I don't think so. Let me tell you a story. I was out in the woods here on a camping trip with Betsy. You don't know Betsy, but she's got a but she's a big pup, uh, pit bull, real intimidating. I'm safe around her. Anyway, first night goes without her, without incident. I get some solitude. Betsy gets to pee wherever she wants. It's all good. Second day, I get the idea into my head that I can hike deeper into the woods. Probably against my better judgment, which is spelled wrong, by the way. But hey, we're just having a fun camping trip, right? So me and Betsy start marching in the morning. It gets a little late, late, late and we set up camp, but it's different this night. Real quiet. No birds, crickets, squirrels, nothing. Dead silent. And then it happens. I hear the most unholy growl I've ever heard in my life. Right outside the tent, me and Betsy, we go to investigate. We look around the clearing, and nobody's there. But there's this feeling. Not sure if I can quite describe it. I, I know someone, something is watching us. Betsy, she's scared. Never seen her like that. And when she's scared, I know I should be too. And then I see it in the distance. A man, but if something that doesn't know what a man is supposed to look like made it. It just looked wrong. Big. Arms too long for its body. Black eyes. It just stood there and stared at me. It might have been that weird teddy bear from Costco. And then it just disappears. I hear one yell from, from Betsy and I turn around to check on her, but she is gone. Thin air. I didn't sleep at all in my tent that night. And I don't think I've slept right since. That's terrible. Go with it. That's a good story. Go with the story. That's terrible. Wow. Robert. I'm sorry. They say that if you listen closely on quiet nights, nights just like tonight, you can hear that howl of the Dover ghost. A howl resonates through the woods. It doesn't sound like a regular howl. It's guttural. Even from far away, it does make my skin crawl. Okay, Robert. Real funny. I turn to Robert. He is white as a sheet. You're messing with me, right? I was until literally just now. I totally made that camping story up. I strain my eyes to scan the forest line, trying to see where the howl originated from. Off in the, the distance, I see something. It's so far away, I barely can make out a shape. It looks human, but it's... dragging something. You see that? I don't know. We should go. Whoa. Robert and I slowly uh, back away and into the trunk. He turns off his headlights and we make a slow crawl back onto the road. I am too scared to look back. What was that? Dover Ghost, I guess. I chuckle nervously. He is telling him it doesn't seem like he's messing with me. Or maybe someone illegally dumping garbage on a wildlife preserve? Yeah, that's the story we'll tell ourselves. We sit in silence a little longer for fear of whatever that was slowly subsiding as we get closer yeah. to the city. Thanks for coming out. This was fun. Mm -hmm. Sorry I haven't been in touch. I'm just... I've been in a way lately. I had to get out of the house. I had to be around somebody. You doing okay, man? Mm -hmm. Robert thinks for a second. Hey. Been doing a lot of thinking. He takes a long mm -hmm. drag. As I get older, I feel more and more that I'm just drowning in this sea of regret. I was so busy chasing after things that I thought would make me happy that I didn't think about anyone else. All I cared about was myself. I didn't even think. Robert stops. I wait for him to finish his thought, but he just stares at the road. Uh, maybe I'm just built like this. Maybe I just do it to myself. Maybe it's my own choice, but that I'm as, as unhappy as I am. I'm trying to think of something to say, but of all the times I remember in my life when I've been sad... And there's been a great many of them, but there was always a light at the end. Something I held on to that kept me going. But there's 
something so resigned about the way Robert's talking. Mmm. Glad you told me. I'm glad you told me. Uh, thanks for telling me about that, because... I feel like just, you know, that sucks. It, like, it, it, like, you're not... Let's be some po let's do some positivity into this. Let's let's bring some happiness into our neighbors' and friends' life. I'm glad you told me. It must have taken you a lot for you to tell somebody this. You're you're a mysterious guy, Robert. You don't have to be. Do you ever Do you ever wish you were a better father? I think about it for a second. All the time. You can read all the parenting books you want, but nothing will ever prepare you for raising a child. There's a lot of stuff I regret or wish I could have done better, but I don't have the answers and I don't know if anyone does. It's funny. I look at you and your relationship with your daughter and it it seems perfect. It isn't. At least you're there for her. I stare out the window of the of passing trees. Okay, so are we finally going to learn about Robert's kid? I just hope I'm a better father to my kid than my dad was to me. What'd your dad do? It's more what he didn't do. He was quiet and stoic. I don't think he ever once told me that he loved me. He cared more about his work than he ever did about me or my mom. Mm -hmm. Do you hate him? No. I used to, but after I became a parent, I just I felt bad for him. He missed out on my whole childhood when I think about all the happiest in my, my in moments in my life, they're with Amanda and Alex. And, and Alex, and he just, he just wasn't there. It hurt like hell. It hurt like hell when he had to leave him to die in that Belarusian prison. Huh? What? I turn and smile at him. No, no, he's in, he's retired in Florida with my mom, and we go every Christmas. <laughs> we both break into laughter. He pats me on the shoulder. We drive the rest of the way in silence, listening to the radio and watching the bright lights of the city grow bigger. Robert drops me off in my place as I'm about to close the passenger door. The door I realize I still have Robert's pocket knife in my jacket. I pull it out, offer it back to him. You hold on to that. Never know when you might need it. Night, Robert. Have a safe drive home. <laughs> Robert smirks and pulls away. He then immediately pulls into his driveway, which is, you know, one over from mine. He gets out and waves. I tiptoe into the house not to wake up Amanda. Whoa, where did you come from? I look around and spot Amanda coming out of the kitchen with a glass of water. I thought you were sleeping. Oh, um, Robert woke me up to go cryptid hunting. Yeah. Uh, you, you know that Mothman is bullshit, right? <laughs> Amanda, Lang, Lang, you know what? It's fine. I think about the conversation I had in the, with Robert in the car as Amanda starts walking toward her room. Hey, Amanda. Mm -hmm. She stops. I love you. Mm -hmm. It's weird when you say it outright and sincerely like that, but I love you too. Night. I chuckle myself and finally go to bed. That went really well. Hmm. Oh man. I'm lost in your oceanic eyes. <laughs> Whoa. I don't know if you heard what Robert just said, but he was he got lost in my oceanic eyes. Oh man. That went a lot better than last time, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, Robert's definitely got a like a soft side for him going on here and you know, again, there, there's no talk about what his relationship is with his kid. Apparently, he does have a kid. And that's nice, but at the same time, all right, let's... I actually enjoyed that a lot more than I thought I was going to. It got a little weird, but it got deep, which was not something I was expecting from Robert. I was not expecting him to open up at all. And that went pretty nicely, actually.